Welcome to the Emperor Snowman. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. If you're returning, thanks for the support. Let's begin. Wielding the ancient weapon, though, proved to be a challenge for Mando. He performs a brutal kill to successfully collect a bounty, but he wounds himself in the process. Then, when he trained with the armorer, he explained why he was having so much trouble with the blade. It was simply too heavy. That, however, posed a very good question. If Din Djarin had so much trouble with the Darksaber, why was Moff Gideon able to wield it without any problems? According to legend, Tara Visla created the Darksaber during his time as a Jedi, the only Mandalorian to ever be a member of the Order. After that, the weapon was kept in the Jedi Temple until the Mandalorians reclaimed it for their people. Over time, the weapon became a symbol of power to the Mandalorians, and only the ruler of Mandalore was entitled to wield it. Moreover, as befit their warlike society, anyone could challenge a current ruler for possession of the Darksaber and, by extension, the right to the throne. Because kyber crystals are all living organisms, all lightsabers have a sense of life. However, the Darksaber has a level of sentience above and beyond what any other lightsaber has displayed. Accordingly, anyone who wields the Darksaber has to put special attention into aligning their will with that of the Saber. Any emotional baggage will hinder their ability to do so, making the Saber feel much heavier than it should. This is precisely what happened to Sabine Wren in Star Wars Rebels, making it more difficult for her to wield. This is also what Din Djarin experiences when wielding the Darksaber, finding it almost too heavy to lift it first. In the Book of Boba Fett, the Darksaber grows heavy in Din Djarin's grip, making it nearly impossible to wield. Although Din Djarin acquired the Saber according to Creed, he immediately tried to give it away, thus declining the responsibility of ruling Mandalore. Because the Darksaber's sentience intertwine its fate with the rulers of Mandalore, Mando's rejection of that role meant that their wills could never align. That's why he has so much trouble wielding the weapon. It doesn't want to be wielded by a selfish bounty hunter who doesn't care about Mandalore. Moff Gideon, on the other hand, had an entirely different perspective on the Darksaber. Although we don't know exactly how Gideon acquired the Darksaber. It stands to reason that he must have done so accordingly to Creed because the Saber never objected to his hand. When Gideon possessed the weapon, he fully accepted the responsibility of ruling Mandalore. For all of his self-righteousness, he still wanted to see Mandalore thrive under his leadership. Thus, the Darksaber accepted him like it would any other Mandalorian leader. After all, being a Mandalorian isn't about race, but about possessing a warlike, domineering ideal which Moff Gideon certainly displayed during his time as ruler of Mandalore, making him a perfect wielder of the Darksaber. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. You have failed me for the last time.